Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at a new stock that has just hit the Nasdaq and um, it is a company called Nikola. And I've written here if Nikola is the new Tesla and that is what we're going to look at today. I guess most of you have heard a bit about them. Uh, they have been going absolutely crazy in there in the stock exchange lately and you might ask yourself now how can they do that if they were just uh, if they were just uh, going public yesterday well it is because they have made a little trick where they are joining a company a sort of a shell company on, on the stock exchange uh, with some money in it that is buying nicola in that was called uh, vector iq uh, vtiq i think the ticker symbol is gone now but that is um, the reason why we have been able to track the stock uh, over the last time. And you can see the stock here. Here we go. Uh, as you can see, we, if we're just looking at the uh, daily chart here. Let me see if I can do that. Just a second. Here we go. Uh, you can see here that it has gone up from, yeah, very small numbers down here and then it has been shooting completely straight up in the air. Now, um, this is what I would call a speculative move. And before I dive into the company itself, we need to remember that there are actually only a few things that can move a company's stock price. One is some fundamental data that they are actually producing and earning and, and proving that they, that they have a stable and solid business. And the other is speculation. Then there's some inflation too, but, but uh, fundamentals and speculation, that's pretty much the two things that can move a stock. And that is why I'm combining, combining fundamental and technical analysis, because the fundamental analysis is on the numbers, the technical an analysis is more on the psychology, the speculations in the market. And a stock that within a few months, uh, you can see here, this is, I'm not sure you can see them in months here, sorry. All right, but we have since April down here, it was at 10 and all of a sudden it was in 40. So this kind of reminds me of uh, the stock movement that we saw in, for instance, Virgin Galactic, the SP, uh, SP, let's see, what is it called? SPCE was it here? Uh, as you can see, we have the Virgin Galactic going down from down here around 5 and 10 and up to 40. Uh, and I'll get back to this uh, com comparison with Virgin Galactics later. But let's just have a look at uh, Nikola here. Uh, if you don't know the company, let's just have a very quick glance on the company. <clears throat> I have the, uh, the papers here, that is from their own website. And we have uh, Nikola here, you can see Vector IQ. Uh, and that is basically a company with a product that is very uh, likable because they are producing trucks on that runs on batteries and their main product is uh, a fuel cell based trucks, meaning that is uh, zero uh, emission trucks. So they wanna make our environment better and of course we like that. But let's just scroll down here. I can tell you that um, I do have some concerns and I have actually listed them up on a list of its its own here but let's just go to the stock and let's just see what we can learn from this they have a key leadership and the ceo right now um or is i'm actually he might be stepping down actually to let this guy be the ceo instead but that is a guy called trevor milton i think he's something like 38 or 39 years old uh he started um nicola uh, some years ago, was it 2015 or 16? We can see that in a second. Uh, so it's not an old company and he's definitely not an old CEO. Then we have a guy called uh, Mark Russell here, president. We have the CFO. <clears throat> the most interesting person here, uh, if you ask me, is Steve Gursky, uh, who is actually the former vice chairman on, uh, on GM and, uh, and helped them a lot. And as far as I remember, Trevor Milton is stepping down as a CEO to let Steve Gursky take over. 
um, that can be uh, an okay move. Uh, it might be a bit uh, premature. It might be a bit early for a founder to step down as a CEO, but there can be different reasons for that. I don't know about. Uh, let's have here zero emission, one global truck platform, two solutions. They have some battery uh, electrical vehicle for short haul, and they have the fuel cells uh, fuel cells for long hauls, and um, that is uh, the core business offerings. That is the battery driven, the fuel cell driven, uh, some hydrogen production and refueling. They're also building a, a network. That is a plan building a network of uh, fuel cell stations. So let's have a look at it here. Uh, let us just scroll down. You can see the core business is uh, they have the, the BEV trucks. That's a battery, battery electrical vehicle here. Industry leading range up to 300 miles. All right, and we can see here that they will be um, ready for production in the next 12 to 18 months. And this is from March, so there's almost just a year uh, to that date, a year and a couple of months. Then we have the fuel cell electrical vehicles here. You have to remember that uh, the, the difference between a hydrogen dr uh, driven vehicle and uh, what we, we, we would call a, an electrical vehicle from, for instance, Tesla, um, a fuel cell driven is actually also just an electrical vehicle. Uh, it is just producing its own electricity out of hydrogen. So you have to uh, put some fuel on these trucks and uh, for that they are building these uh, hydrogen stations. That is their core business. And then they have platform enabled here. Um, they are ready for uh, self-driving, uh, autonomous ready and some grid storage. Uh, I and I haven't dived into this one, but I'm pretty sure that this is uh, when the world at some point, hopefully, is doing a lot more green energy, but have a trouble storing it. Then uh, if you have a million of these trucks out on the Internet, uh, not on the Internet, but on the net, uh, the electricity net, then they can help uh, to be some storage capacity. I think that is uh, this thing here. As you can see, they were founded in 2015. And uh, there is this line. I will link to. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to this PDF in under the video here, so you can see it for yourself. Um, so they are mentioning some different partners they are having here. Uh, they have just teamed up with Iveco. Um, I think they are under the Fiat Chrysler uh, company, uh, but they have specialized in producing trucks. So that seems like a, a, a decent uh, joint venture. There seems very fine. Um, and then they have some uh, numbers <clears throat> as to some reservations. And I'll get back to these reservations because there's something that puzzles me a bit about uh, these. But they have, as I say right now, uh, around 14,000 um, reservations before production even starts. Reservations on fuel cells uh, trucks here, which is amazing. Uh, I must say that. All right. Um, they have a lot of description of the product down here. Uh, what I want to take you down to is actually, yeah, they are also producing some uh, pickup trucks or they will be producing some pickup trucks uh, on different um, and some watercraft and stuff here. Uh, they will pretty much put, put their technology into uh, anything here. All right. So what I want to get down to is the numbers. Because now we're getting to some of the things that concerns me a bit. And let me just jump back to my PowerPoint here, because there are several things that concerns me with this company. And I can tell you right away, I'm not investing in it. Um, let me just start from the beginning here. Let me say before anybody starts uh, uh, hating and commenting down in the comment section, I really root for this company. I want it to be a success. I, I really see that there could be a future for something like this and a market for something like this. I think that the time is right, but there's simply something off here. And I have to mention that because otherwise it would not be an analysis. It would just be an opinion please, a piece saying uh, I love the company. Um, I made the same with the Tesla a while ago. 
uh, where I said why I thought there were some really big things off in the Tesla pricing. I did the same with the Virgin Galactic. And every time people are writing me hate comments and you are welcome if that makes you feel better, I can definitely take it. But uh, it's just to say that I'm not a hater of these companies. Um, I just think that we need to call out what could be wrong here. And uh, first of all, what worries me a bit is that in the fall last year, 2019, I think it was September, they tried to get some additional funding uh, they were trying to get uh, a about a billion uh, dollars to, to, to run the company because they're, they're quite cash consuming. And uh, what they ended up with, <clears throat> I actually think that it was a, a one and a quarter uh, billion dollars they were going for. They ended up with 250 billion dollars, whereas a hundred billion, sorry, the hundred million yeah, sorry, a hundred million dollars were in cash and then there was a hundred and fifty million dollars in some sort of uh, collaboration uh, service thing. So they pretty much ended up a big failure in the normal big funding market where you're going out to the big funds and, and, and trying to get some professional investors to put money in, into your company. That was kind of a failure, I must say. And um, what they did instead was that they teamed up with this shell company already uh, on the NASDAQ called uh, Vecture IQ, as I mentioned. Um, and they are going to do some, some pipe financing where they're getting 500 and something million in and they have a couple of uh, $100 million. So they have around seven, uh, $700 million. Actually, they're having 900 something. But as I mentioned down here, there are some costs and one of them, and that is something that puzzles me now, I'm just jumping a bit in it here, <clears throat> is that this CEO and founder, Trevor Milton, in this process, just going public, the company desperately need funding. And he is talking about um, visions and, and he wants to make build a better world and they can revolutionize this business. Uh, and oh, by the way, I'm just taking out $70 million. And um, I do understand the urge for trying to capitalize on your success. Um, to be honest, this smells a little bit like someone that doesn't believe 100% in the idea and wants to make sure that he's getting his money out. I'm not certain I wouldn't do the same. Uh, if I were to, to take $70 million out, that would be a nice payday, no doubt about that. Uh, and you can argue back and forth about this, but it is just, you're really, really low on cash and you have missed your fundings in a funding campaign in, in 2019. And you're just sitting, as I'm gonna show you in a second, you're sitting with some huge, huge uh, cash burners uh, and then you are taking the founder, the CEO, the visionary is taking uh, about 10% of the uh, liquidity out of the company for your own payday. I think that sounds a bit uh, fishy, to be honest. Then we should be aware that um, when we're looking at the stock charts, let's just go to that. <clears throat> Um, there are not very many stocks in free float, meaning that there are not very many stocks here that actually, um, that there are a lot of stocks, but they are not in free float on the stock exchange, meaning you can't trade them. They are held in some funds and, and some uh, different structures. And um, there are only 23 million uh, shares outstanding. And that you might say, well, that sounds like a lot. Well, when you compare to, for instance, this day here, in May, um, there was a trading volume uh, in Nikola on the stock exchange that was called uh, VTIQ at that point, but there was a trading volume at 44 million shares, meaning about double the entire free float of the company. <clears throat> and several of these days where we can see a high volume, uh, there were uh, 20 million or above shares traded here, meaning that this skyrocketing price is probably, in my experience, I have seen this a ton of times and I could be wrong, but this is probably caused by uh, a hype, a media hype, um, some retail trailer, uh, trader hype, 
and then very few free floating free floating stocks because what we should be aware of also is that over the next one to two years a lot of the uh, of, of, of the uh, persons and the funds that have put money into this uh, and, and have some uh, options and some warrants and different things they are actually able within the next I think the first are in about six or eight months and then on uh, going on uh, the f uh, the free float number of the stocks is going up to around a hundred million meaning that they're gonna be four times as many free floating stocks so unless that there is four times as much buying power running into the stock just this fact alone will simply uh, put the the stock back in 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 ten dollars or something like that so uh, that concerns me a bit if I were to buy the stock up here at around uh, 33 <clears throat> when they were uh, when they made this deal with the vector IQ they were they were valued at around 3.3 billion dollars which you could argue was a bit high but uh, that was down here when the stock was around 10 or 12 or something like that meaning that right now they are up at a valuation at around uh, as far as I can uh, do a little calculation around 11 or 12 billion dollars so they couldn't get funding because people thought that a billion dollars would be too much then they find a, co a, a collaboration partner that is um, willing to to evaluate them at 3.3 billion dollars uh, and now they are when re retailers are coming in they're all of a sudden worth 12 billion dollars that doesn't really make sense and when I look at the numbers and we're gonna look at them now um, it makes even less sense let's just see here if there's some of the numbers here that's the insane volume um, all right, let's just jump into the numbers then. I hope you can see them here. <clears throat> they are a bit small. You can see here that um, the BV trucks, uh, battery trucks, um, sold units 600, 1200, um, and that is projections, estimates. Uh, 600 sold here. Um, let's see here. Uh, that must they also they already have the reservations on them but I guess this is where they they uh, expect the money to get in uh, 1200 3500 7000 and then they have the few the fuel cell trucks here at two and seven uh, two and five thousand and they have the hydrogen stations completed and um, that is 10 uh, and that is in 2023 that is three years from now and 24. Uh, so they are planning on building this huge net of hydrogen stations um, but in uh, in four years they are planning on have 24 of these uh, out uh, all over United States and since there are 50 states in United States this is uh, less than one per two states so that is not really a network as it is some hydrogen stations scattered out all, uh, over the country um, they will be putting their, uh, their hydrogen stations in some smart locations because they have one order by now um, on 800 trucks with a brewery, uh, Anheuser Busch, I think they're called. And they have ordered 800 of these trucks, which is great. And uh, they are planning, as far as I can tell, to put these uh, hydrogen stations near these uh, brewery. Uh, storage where all the trucks are going in to get the, the, the beers uh, and that is of course smart enough so they're planning on some revenues here uh, 150 million 300 million so on so forth that all sounds good and dandy the problem here as far as I can tell is that a lot of the numbers they are calculating with here they're simply thin air they, they are just completely blown up what I can see is that they are in all of their papers and, and, and projections, they are touting these 14,000 trucks that has been pre-ordered. Well, there is a little problem with that. And that has been noted by a lot of analysts that I have read about. <clears throat> um, that is that to reserve, to, to make a reservation, to, to order one of these trucks, you just have to go into the website uh, fill out uh, a little uh, form in there 
and then say, yes, I would like a truck when it is available. You don't have to put any deposits in. You don't have to make any, any form of commitments. I could pretty much sit in here in my kitchen office here and I could order a hundred uh, uh, Nikola trucks and they would go into their uh, statement here as uh, revenue numbers and that is simply wrong. Tesla have done some of the th uh, same things. They have done this where you can uh, uh, say up front, I want uh, some, some of their cars when they're ready. However, they were at least charging some sort of deposit. I think the lowest was uh, $100, but some of them were up around, I think it was $1,000 or $2,000. And at least you have to have a bit of commitment when you put up $1,000 or $2,000. And even then, with that sort of commitment, they saw that at least 30% of the so-called sales simply didn't, they weren't realized. So they only sold 70% of that uh, number they had expected because that people simply uh, jumped off the order, maybe because they didn't have the money, maybe because there was so much, uh, such a, a long waiting line that they simply had to buy another car before that. And that is something that could easily happen here. If Nikola get to a 50% sale of these pre-orders, if they just get 7,000 trucks uh, in real sales, I would really be amazed. I would think that the numbers would be down to around 30 to 40 percent. That's just my guesstimate here. Uh, but but that is uh, when, when people can simply just go into a website and just order this for free. That sounds completely insane that they can be valued. Uh, uh, the, the price of the company can be valued based on orders made out of thin air. They could have a, a Karen and John in the back office space sitting, typing in uh, just numbers and orders and reservations without any thought or any sort of, of, uh, of uh, real life expectancy here. I'm simply just baffled and, and completely amazed that a company right now can be worth $12 billion from orders that maybe don't exist or at least that we don't know how many of them will go through. All right, um, that is just me. And that is one of the reasons why I'm not buying into this before I see some sort of follow up uh, on this. Um, when we're looking at the numbers down here, um, the funny thing is they have this discounted future value of Nikola North America uh, Trucking Corporation here and that is all fine and they have the EBITDA and they have the discount rate and that is all of the stuff we normally do when we analyze uh, in the fundamentals. However, they're still putting the, the 14,000 units sold in here. How can they do that? Um, that doesn't make sense. But um, then they do another smart thing here, at least if you want to convince some investors. As you can see, they're doing something called operational benchmarking here. So they are comparing the self, themselves, Nikola here, to some of their competitors. They actually have Virgin Galactic here. They have Neo uh, that you might remember that didn't go too well. Uh, we have Tesla, we have uh, NEL, which is a Scandinavian company that uh, delivers some stuff for them. They have a lot of, of, of uh, competitors or people in, in the same niches here. But what they do is, what you can see here, is that the revenue growth here, uh, it all looks very good. They are way ahead of their competitors. But the thing is that for the competitors, that is companies that are up and running already. And what they're doing here is that they're looking for the estimated numbers for 2019 to 2021 for their peers. And then they're looking for the 2022 to 2025 numbers for themselves, meaning that these are actually numbers in real life happening right now in 19, 20, 21, where we can actually do some estimations and say, yes, this is uh, actually quite possible that this could happen. And then we're taking a company that hasn't yet delivered a single truck out on the road. Uh, and we are going out at least two years and out five years 
and saying uh, um, in five years on this uh, fairy tale dust, uh, we compare to r right now real life numbers from the competitors. That is beyond my comprehension how anyone can 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 take this for for facts uh, and they keep doing that uh, the 2020 for their peers and so on and then they're going out to 2025 for their own numbers just to give you a, a quick reminder here i really want this company to be a success i i, I love these uh, as i said also in 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 the tesla analysis I actually admire Elon Musk uh, a lot, and and I um, and I want Tesla to be a success, and it's, it seems like they're going in the right direction. The question is, will Tesla, will Nikola be the new Tesla? Kind of funny they pick these names, by the way, since Tesla is uh, named after Nikola Tesla, and then Nikola is calling themselves Nikola. <laughs> it's kind of a uh, lawsuit begging to 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 be had there, um, but. When we're looking at these concerns, they have this unsuccessful funding campaign. They simply don't have enough cash. I can pretty much guarantee you that within the next couple of years, maybe before, they will have to go out to get some more funding because they will be burning this cash really, really fast. And and uh, when they, if you buy into the stock right now. And they are going to get, and, and they're going to need some new cars. They may, they may be needing a billion, two billion, four billion dollars. Who knows? Um, we saw that with Tesla that they were running out of cash and had to to uh, get some extra cash in. And when a company does that, they can do it by borrowing, meaning that you are now owning stocks in a company that have a lot more debt than when you entered, which is not good. They have uh, interest payments in the future. Or they can go out to issue some more stocks or do whatever they do on the stock market, meaning that your stock you're sitting with is diluted. So that is another thing here. Um, this is the 14,000 quote unquote sold trucks. Trevor Milton is taking out insane volume. They haven't proven anything. Um, when we're looking at a company like Tesla, when they went um, on, on the stock exchange, as far as I recall, they actually were producing cars at that time and they were selling cars and people were driving them and they had their first, um, yeah, they had some experience with the first cars here, but uh, Nikola has done nothing. They, ha they have the truck and it is nice and it is nicely looking, but it hasn't been driving a million miles to get all of the experience and all of the small glitches and errors that of course will come. So what they're doing in the numbers here is pretty much expecting everything to go as planned. They are expecting the 14,000 trucks to go through, um, not a single customer not buying it. They are expecting a huge growth, growth here. The first year uh, with, the, with the fuel cell truck here, they'll, they will be, be producing 2,000 trucks in a year. That's quite a lot for a new company. Um, I, I don't know the numbers for Tesla. Um, I know that they are working with Iveco, which is a truck manufacturer, but 2000 in their first year, I can pretty much guarantee you that these number, they, they might reach these numbers, but there will be at least two, maybe three years of delay. And what you can see down here is that the EBITDA, uh, what they're actually making on the bottom line here uh, is uh, in 2024, um, they are planning on having uh, a profit of $213 million. Now, if these numbers are correct and the stock price doesn't move an inch from here and they are priced at around 11 or $12 billion right now, then in four years, if everything goes as planned, you are going to have a company making $200 million that is worth $12 billion, meaning that you are right now uh, paying a price earning of what, uh, 50? For a company that hasn't produced a single product for the customer yet, that hasn't proved anything, that hasn't gone all through all the problems. We know from Tesla, they have been, they, they have been, they have been so many production problems uh, with Tesla. Uh, and and uh, they have been delayed and delayed and delayed. 
the, the Tesla uh, battery truck has been delayed. They might start up this year, uh, might produce a, a few hundred units, 500 units or so on. Nikola will be producing 2000 the first year, assuming that, they'll, that there'll be no problem whatsoever. So if you're buying a company that you, where you have to hold the, the, the stock, the, the, the company stock will be uh, a debt in four years as for what earnings goes. So in four years, you will have a share in a company that is priced at around $12 billion. If the price doesn't go up, then of course the price earning PE will be even higher, but that is making $200 million in a $12 billion company. And if it is priced at four times or five times or 10 times the amount of that, of course, the price earning at that point will then be, I don't know, 500. And that is the exact same thing I said with uh, Virgin Galactic, because Virgin Galactic was also a, some sort of pie in the sky scheme that might be a success. And I really hope they do. But the problem is that you're buying into a stock that might in the future produce profit if there's no problem. And the thing here, and I wrote that, uh, I said that in, in the video when the when the Virgin Galactic was up around 40, and my was I almost killed over the internet here. Um, now, I know that has been a big crisis in the stock market, but the stock was up at 42, and when it was at, the, at its lowest, it was at nine. Uh, and I said somewhere around 10 and 15 might be a place for Virgin Galactic to be if it out in the future you sh should just be reasonably priced. So what I fear will happen, and it, it, it's not necessarily happening, but what I fear will happen here with Nikola is the exact same thing. Um, if you know the, the, the fairy tale, uh, Hans Christian Andersen, I think it is, isn't it? It doesn't matter who wrote it, but the Empress New Cloth, where uh, this, uh, this little guy all of a sudden whispers to the crowd, well, the Empress has no cloth on. And all of a sudden they all start laughing, but because all of a sudden they can all see it. I am a bit afraid that that will happen to Nicola. There might be some hype that can push this further up, but I have a feeling that at some point, the analysts, the, the big guys uh, in the market will be pushing some reason into this. And um, I've heard a, an argument and I will stop in a second. You don't have to listen to, to, to any of my talk uh, much longer now. But I've heard an argument here saying that, yeah, well, but they're using the technology of the future. They might be. We don't know, but they might be. And I hope so. But you just have to realize that just because a company is using the, the, the technology for the future doesn't mean that the company will be a success. The first companies that started up uh, doing internet services, you can look up American Online, for instance, or uh, AOL, or some of these companies that were the front runners when the internet was new. The argument then, because for they should be priced at a price earning at a thousand or two thousand, not ever making money, and was that this is a technology of the future? Yes, it was, but they were not the companies that that won that future. So what I'm saying here is that Nikola might be a success, and I really, really hope it will. I just think it is not likely. That it will, that it should be priced at twelve billion dollars at this current moment in time. Many of the companies in the dot com bubble, AOL and so on, they were actually producing a product that people were using. Nikola is not; they haven't produced anything that. There's not a customer driving around saying, "Yes, I've had this truck and I've driven it for half a million miles, and I'm so satisfied or so dissatisfied." Um, we don't know. So there's about a billion things that could go wrong here. And I think it is very, very unlikely that they can go through their entire process without finding new funding. And whenever they do that, your stock will be worth less. And um, yes, my conclusion quickly, I will not buy it. I might buy it in the future, in five years. And you might say, yeah, well, then it, it, you can't go up at 10,000%. At no, but that's not what I'm aiming for. I'm not aiming for lottery tickets. I'm aiming for companies in good trends. Well, we do have a good trend here, uh, but also good trends in the fundamentals. And right now, there's nothing, that's simply nothing in Nikola that I, um, that I can see of a value where I will put my money into it.
doesn't mean you won't make money. It, it might go up to 400 and you can laugh all the way down to the bank uh, at this crazy video. But this is my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take my financial advice. That's all for today. Thank you very much for your time and uh, take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.